this conference is living in harmony and obedience to the Holy Spirit. We have discovered, it's more of, if I can put it straightforward, of revelation gifts. Where as a church, we need to be moving according to the guidance of the Spirit of God. There is not a single person who is immune from being guided and hearing the Spirit of God when the Spirit speaks to that person. The book, I mean, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, the Bible says, when the devil tempted, when he was tempting uh, Jesus, it reads, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And, and, and the, the next verse, verse 4, but Jesus answered him, him saying, it is written. It is not something that is here in the New Testament. It's written in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Or oh, that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, <clears throat> man shall not live by bread, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This one says every word of God. Other versions, they said every word, the, uh, new, I mean, the old King James, that's new, old King James, not so. it says, by man shall live by every word that proceedeth, it is present, continuous tense. He shall not live by, by, by bread alone. So, it is important, especially in our days, where religion is what is coming, is growing fast, more than being I mean, having a relationship with God. In a religion, <clears throat> I must repeat what I used to say I mean, to you. In a religion, it's man always trying, or it's humankind always trying, making means to reach out to God. There are a lot of countries, like India, where there are millions and millions of gods People they pick up whether it's this, this leaf, one can decide to have this plant and just worship this plant. So those are the countries that are still struggling, who are trying to reach out to God with their means. It is a growing thing now, this thing of trying to reach out to God. Even the Pentecostals, they have lost the touch of God. And people are beginning, they are much more comfortable in a service where God does not speak because of the condition of the churches today because people are living in sin. And people's hearts are not open to God. There's so much that is going in the hearts of people, hatred, you can name it, slandering, backbiting within the church. They are not literally, they are not ready for God to speak to them. Because if God begins to open up a mouth, he will just focus on them. He will just scatter that church and say there's no church here. How we need to hear from God in these days. In fact, within, I mean, we, uh, each and every service, we need to be clear and hear God. Therefore, we need to sharpen our hearing uh, uh, aids, like your spirit. Your spirit is very crucial to be on the receiving part. 
There's a, a teaching here on a leadership that we used to teach, but I'm not going to dwell. We have just decided, decided that I know that it's being taught in some churches. But I'm just going to highlight some few things where it says how to hear the voice of God. <clears throat> how many of you have gone through that teaching? Leadership training that says how to hear the voice of God. Can I see your hands? There's few, there's few. It's very few of you. I was made to understand that you do teach it in your leadership I mean, classes because Rolando told me that you taught that. So it means if we are not doing it, there's so much damage that we are doing in the leadership that we have. Because those people will never be in a position to guide the, the, the flock. You cannot have a leader who is not clear, who is not sure when God speaks. Because I made it a point that I teach you, the pastors, so that you begin to teach people. And when the Bible says, man does not live with bread alone, but with every word, it means God continues to speak to his people almost every day, every hour, every, every minute. If your spirit has been born again, or if you are born, you're a born again believer, your spirit is always or is supposed to be hearing from God every time. I'm going to be carrying two messages at one time here. Because the, the, the message that I was going to start with, it was beginning to move in prophecy. Because I want you to be clear of what prophecy when a person prophesies, how do you go about hearing God speaking to you? And there are a lot of us who have been hearing those voices. And we have been so reluctant to, 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 I mean, to release those prophecies. Because we were not, some of us were not sure. Is it God? Is it my mind? Is it, or is it something that I've been meditating upon? So it's very, very important. As I will be talking about here, how to hear God's voice. Also, you must understand that I'll be talking about beginning to move in prophets. Because those two things will be I mean, complementing each other. <laughs> so it was the devil here tempting, uh, tempting uh, uh, Jesus to turn the stones uh, to become bread. Because Jesus was coming out of a fast, a 40-day fast, and was there saying, no. If you are a son of God, you must remember also the temptation that is out there in the body of Christ. Where we, there's so much abuse of the power of the Holy Spirit. When God endows us, empowers us with his spirit. There is so much, I mean, I mean a, a, a abuse of the people playing with that, playing with the gifts. And do whatever they do. But why are we teaching this time? And it's because our aim, okay, our aim is to mature the church. And God in these days has been speaking to me to, to make the church to sit down and be able to equip the church, the saints. That's my ministry. And it does not just be. I'll be going around and I'll say, be, 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 and then talking about other things. But I, when I said that, I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, in our prayer meetings here in this land, that we must be able to clarify our responsibilities in the body of Christ. The, the past, the off, I mean, the office gifts, which is the fivefold ministry. Apostles, pastors, I mean the prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. The Bible specifically says our ministry is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. 